Well, hello to RBIM. Back in 2003 or 4, I had a phone conversation with a client. Phone with a client. And when I was talking to her, I was running what you would know as a not NLP pattern, which means it's a comparison mode. Comparison. Now, some people say, What's a comparison mode? Well, at around age four, a lot of, you know, most kids then develop this, uh, you know, awareness of they are different from the you know, context of other people, family and stuff like that, right? And this is a uh, brain development of prefrontal cortex and all that stuff. I want to run into that, but it's, we can call it awareness. For simplicity. When I was running this not NLP pattern, at the time I didn't name it, but I was asking this client to define her future experience her future experience by asking what's going to be there, what's in it, what's in it, what's in it, and what's not in it. This was, it took about 10 minutes. What happened was she was, after 10 minutes, telling me this thing that her suddenly her memory or experience, or in this case her trauma, uh, vanished. It was gone. She didn't need to do that anymore. But we didn't work on that. We just worked on her future experience. And this was the, the uh, thing I was doing back in the day. You can say that. But, I know, what was we going to do today is that we will tie back to this kind of experience about the comparison and all that stuff. But I was trying to solve why people, in this case people, people couldn't understand the reality had shifted. The reality had shifted, but people, you know, didn't understand that. So you can, other people could see them have a different experience, but they couldn't understand it. And this confused me because I was on, trying to understand what's going on. Now. So let's shift to the next step. So let's say you have a problem. You have a problem. Normally you would handle the problem by eliciting an outcome. More or less like, you know, oh yeah, I want to go there, there. That's a nice place to be. That's a nice thing to do. So you will have an NLP, for example, would apply some pattern to make you go from the present to that future, you know, outcome. So that's what the people in NLP are trying to do, you know, fixing, you know, uh, doing a, for example, you can name switch pattern, uh, new code NLP, for example, is doing uh, uh, no content state, stuff like that. Uh, basically, you know, resetting the system and stuff like that, and then applying back. Uh, now, in the cell, for example, in the, uh, people start with a positive bias. Positive bias. Like, you know, <coughs> you, it's already working for you. So it's working, and then we try to improve that, basically. That's for simplicity, right? You have a positive bias in middle self. Middle self is a uh, uh, system applied by user brigham. I know. So what's going on here is that uh, back in 2003, I was, you know, exposed to uh, DSP, the design switch pattern. Anyway, that's a kind of a switch, but using the positive bias was working to improve on that. That's basically it uh, from 2003. And now, what I found that to do this kind of, you know, you can do it the NLP way if you want, but you're going to run into problems in the later. So we have this RBIM thing now. Well, 
So let's say we start on the left side. We have a problem or present state here. Whatever that might be. It might be uh, fear for something, uh, phobia, stuff like that, whatever. Or it could be worry, anxiety, you know. Uh, it could be something in your thinking pattern or handling emotions. Or it could be some behaviors you're having trouble with, whatever. That's the, you know, present, current, whatever. Now, we do the next step in the RBIM stuff. Asking, okay, if that's not, you know, uh, it's not working, what's, what's it like for you when this is working, whatever that might be. So if you have a fear of phobia, right? Now most people when they try to do this by themselves, they have, let, let's say they have a, well, in this kind of situation, I have a confidence issue, confidence. So they assume that if I have confidence, then I will succeed. Then I will be succeed, succeed. Then I'll be, you know, happy and, you know, feeling great about life and stuff like that. And well, if that would do, if it would be true, then that wouldn't happen for them. So I'm asking people here, okay, what's going to be like for you when this is not, uh, we define a reference here, like when it's working, life is working here, in this context, in this context, life is working. Uh, question, okay, what, then we do the next step. That's the thing with the RBIM model. We do the next step. What we do here is we ask questions to uh, define an adjective, a uh, value, if you like, a value, or an attribute, or a characteristics. You have to excuse my English and my spelling because I, I don't care for <laughs> spelling that right. But anyway, so what happens is going to happen here is the following thing. This is really interesting here. So you have a problem, you come from, well, this is how life it is right now. Now you're thinking, okay, Rob, I want to have something that works better anyway. Then in relation to that, you're asking a question that's like, if this is already true or happening for me or then what kind of, you know, attribute and characteristics and value have I developed as a, you know, in relation to that. So most likely you have, you know, developed uh, something in conjunction with this future experience. And when we do that, we ask this kind of question in relation to this future set, not that, the future one. So we do draw a line there, right? This is working, okay? I have a confidence problem, okay? But when I don't have a confidence problem, something is going to work for me, okay? In, in regard to that, what's, what's it going to be for me when this is going to work for me? Well, you're going to list a few uh, values here and attributes and characteristics that you have developed as a conjunction with this future experience. Experience that you don't have yet. We don't need to elicit the future, you know, uh, state or something like that. You have to. You don't need to elicit that and anchor that and then fire off the anchor or whatever. That's a lot of work. I can't do that anymore, basically. Anyhow, so what kind of question do you ask? Well, let's say, uh, for me, I had a sugar issue. So I was eating too much sugar. I will put sugar here as a reference, sugar. So I was eating too much sugar. So I was asking myself, so when this is not, you know, when, it, when I'm not eating that much sugar, I'm eating, you know, the way I want to eat, then what kind of an, uh, value and attribute do I develop as a reason, as a, you know, reference in conjunction with that? So I started to also, what do, you, do I, you know, develop as, if I'm, have this kind of working experience in the future, what kind of experience and attribute do I develop as a, you know, in conjunction with that. So I started to list a few things, and after I listed a few of those things, 
Uh, one of the things that pop up for me, it popped up in my mind, popped in my mind, was this evil circle. Evil circle, I was spelling that wrong, also, I don't care. Was now gone. You see, when you start to define, this is about defining, define. The future value and future adjective and the future attribute as you have developed by having this state and then having this solution, having this experience. When you start to define that, when you have uh, manage to put those down, you will find that uh, whatever you, you know, because you're going to shift context. Now, this comes from uh, a guy that uh, uh, is called Gio Wallner. He a, was a great table tennis player, table tennis. And he was listening in an interview a few years back, and he was saying that the, when he was preparing for a championship, he was like, you know, ready for it and when he was ready for it that was when he was able to reach able to reach any ball well in the context when he was playing right they were playing like this right and when he was preparing for the championship when he got the signal of i was he was able to reach any ball in that context in that you know space if you like or context, context and space. When he was able to do that, he had a, uh, a sensation, in, in basically, that he knew that he was ready to go compete. Back in 1992, he won the Olympics. He did that by losing one set, one set. He lost one set on the whole tournament. Back in 19. 97 in Manchester, Europe. Manchester, whatever. He had 21 0. And he won seven games in a row to be a world champion. He didn't lose the set. And in that kind of sport, that's pretty, you know, special. But he did this thing. He was, you know, defining that he was ready for it by he was able to reach any ball. And that's a value. It's also an adjective. That's a grammar for those who don't know that. And it's also defining his ability to, to play. And when you're able to do this kind of statement in this, what I was talking about previously here. So when you're able to start to define your own adjective value and accuracy that you develop as a working reference to your future experience. Sooner or later, the old issue, this, what I, will pop up in your mind and will be gone because you shift context. And that's the RBIM model. Yeah, normally, as I was writing here before, right, that you have a problem and then you define an outcome and then you will be doing the pattern in relationship to the problem because you have to do a switch pattern and you have to use the problem. And if you need to do the middle self positive BS working and improving all that stuff, the thing with middle self is then you have to do a limited limitation. That means you have to use a, a, some kind of anchor to make sure when the people, when the individual is trying to access the future reference, uh, when they have this kind of right. But, Sometimes they, they want to go back to the old problem because it's not gone. So then you put a, a block in, in the way so they can access the uh, old problem. What I found over the, is a verification process. That you need to verify your experience. Uh, that's the reality and perception for people. And if you try, as soon as you access and trying to ask yourself, let's say you ask, uh, you access a, a, a great experience, right? You you access that. As soon as you you know access the experience, the verification process starts. When the verification process goes into gear, you make a comparison. 
once you make this comparison, whatever that might be for you, this is going to be active. This is going to be active. When it's active, then you can't access this experience. It blocks it. Pretty much. Blocks it. Blocks it out. You can't access it. And then you have a lot of issues with that. And you go like, well, what should I do now? What should I do? And, you know, because you're involved in this decision making process. Once, once you start to define this future experience and next step is to define the value and the adjective to that what you develop as a uh, reference to the old uh, exp uh, future experience whatever you call it so once you start to have this kind of okay I have a problem okay give a shit about that I'm asking myself what's life going to be when it's working in that context or you know in general whatever that might be then I ask a follow-up question in relation to that so I'm st going back to this, okay, this is my future experience, and I'm, in some way I'm going to develop some uh, learning things about it. I'm going to define that I have an, some kind of adjective value, because I, if I'm able to have this kind of experience, something is going to happen in my life and for myself. And once you start listing this, uh, all these reasons, sooner or later you're going to shift context. And when you shift context, the whole problem it's going to go away. Now, this is not going to be a change. This is not going to be, you know, some people say, well, is this a change? You know, I say, well, not really. What happens is, that once you, you're working with the future experience here, and people are like, okay, what's the future experience? What is the future memory, if you like? It's a memory that hasn't happened yet, right? Future memory, right? When you started working with the adjective in, that you develop as a uh, having this kind of experience, then you have to develop something. You apply causality. Once you develop causality, you have to define these things you develop as having the future experience. Once you start to define those, those start to define yourself. That means for you as an individual, it will feel like no change has happened, most likely. If you feel like that no change has happened or it feels different now, when you engage into the context, the new experience will be present and the old experience won't be there. That's what will happen when it works. Now some people will ask me, what kind of questions do I need to ask to make this, you know, a list going to happen? In this is where I'm going to start the English language. I can do this in Swedish, but in Swedish, but I have a lot of issues with the English language as far to. But this is a value because when this works, you have what people would call uh, a vestibular reference. So you will have a vestibular because, as John Wallen will say, right? I'm able to reach any ball in the. You know, when he was playing, when he had that kind of feeling, a sensation that he's able to reach an ball, it doesn't mean he's able to do that, but he has an internal sensation that he's been working out, he's preparing for the championship, then when he got that signal, he knew he was ready. Then he could play his best game of table tennis every time. And if you're able to do this, what will happen is when you shift context, and that new, the new experience will reside there. And uh, that's pretty much it. So, have fun with that. So, what happens here, you know, I'm just going to re repeat this a bit. Instead of working with the problem, then go to the outcome. We just, you know, take away the problem and ask a future experience. And then we ask, in relation to the future experience, what have you developed as a, you know, a reference to that? And when you start to define that, and it can take some time, some things that will happen is that you might have an impasse that you have no you know, answer to that, but it's, just keep asking it. Uh, when I was developed this, I had the, on the phone with this client back in the day, it was almost 10 years ago, I had the, the answer I had there was that, but when I was developing not NLP, what I found that was a lot of people had an issue 
because they will start looping the recursive called recursive loop because it loops back to yourself basically it becomes a loop into yourself so if you have a problem and then try to solve the problem you will go back to to that you can't get out of it you, you will uh, stay in the context in the context you will stay in the context you will still have the problem that's why the, the solution stuff that people do uh, from the problem to the future sometimes doesn't work because people think that well if I have the problem with confidence and then I uh, solve that by having confidence that won't work because if it did work that uh, thinking would fix it but it doesn't and you can do it like with the self test and all this uh, other stuff like the something or working but then you sooner or later have to do a limited limitation because all problem will still be there if you're able to do this the old problem will go away you, you won't be able to access it anymore it will be just a memory, basically. Oh, I used to do that. I don't do that anymore. I'm cool. One other thing will uh, develop along the way, but I won't go into that now. I just wanted to present this so you have some idea. And you can ask questions if you like about this. And uh, we don't talk about the problem, but that's not interesting anyway. But you want to when it's working for you okay if it's working for me what do, did I develop as a you know reference to that future experience that I'm you know working for me and sooner or later you're going to list a few things that uh, what's that's going to be like for you and once you listed and find a proper reference for you uh, whatever has been here will be go away it will just vanish because the new experience then will take its place just like that pretty much because you shift in context and when you shift in context you shift in reality because you started to define this is def defining the future experience you're basically telling your brain this is the experience I want to have in that context and that and then you have to you know uh, that loop back to you in rec recursively in your loop on, on yourself so you have to you know step up and become this definition that you already define and since it you if you can do that, well, you're going to have a lot of fun with that. And now, any questions? Keep asking.